All right, guys, so we've come back from losing memory there. Um, just got done with our little planing, and you can see that this, the second one and the first one ended up being very similar in terms of size and shape, which is what we were going for. Uh, they are not exact. They don't need to be exact. But uh, now on to next next step. We have to figure out a way to fix these to the aircraft. And the way I've done it in the past works really nice. I use some small wire to actually um, make the pins that will hold these into the bottom of the other arm. So I'm going to show you how I do that. Okay, guys, so I use this wire here. And I'm calling it a welding wire. And I'm pretty sure... As you can see, it looks like it's stainless steel, but it's not. It's just, um, I think it's a flux core wire. But either way, the way I do this is, uh, this was twisted together for some stupid reason, so I'm not sure why, but anyway, what I do is I just cut a number of different pieces. So let's say I cut, <clears throat> you know, like six or eight of them per, per wing. So there's four you need to have a couple that are a little bit shorter at the ends where it gets thinner. So there's one, two, three, four, five, six. And so you basically cut those up and you'll get ready to slide them in. You want them to be about half the, the thickness on both sides. And you get one of these little drill bit sets. And what you can do is you'll take and find the size that matches close to your welding wire. Oh, I just shot my little drill bits. And it's surprisingly thin stuff. So you don't want the hole to be a whole lot bigger than... In fact, you almost want it to be like a little bit smaller. Because balsa wood is so weak, it will actually give. So just take this, size it up. Okay, so that's close enough forward. And you can also use the wire to actually drill in there. And uh, that is one way you can do it. So what you're going to do is you're just going to... Get that in the chuck. Okay. Give me a second. I'm going to get my chuck cleaned out. I got a little bit of glue in there. It's so small you can barely see it. <laughs> so basically what you're doing is, these are just pins. They keep them laterally placed. And this is a little bit tricky because you glued these things together here. You're going to just do that a number of times. I usually start on both ends. And I just do this all the way down the length. Just make sure you can tell where the holes are, because sometimes those holes like to sort of collapse back on themselves. <clears throat> I've had pretty good luck doing this way. You know, you could probably get away with less, but this is what really helps to move that surface. Okay, so it's like a 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Okay, so that's kind of overkill, Brian. But either way, you get the idea. So I'm just going to do that to both sides, and then I'll come right back to you. All right, so I got my holes, and now I just need to figure out how to fix these in here. And like most things, there's a million different ways to skin this cat. In our case, what we're going to need to do is we're going to need to glue them in. So I'll show you how to. So this stuff isn't going to film very good, but basically I took the drill and uh, chucked onto a piece, like so. This piece wasn't straightened yet. See, it's got a wiggle. Just grab it and straighten it out. Okay, then I took and I actually ran it into the uh, glue bottle because I was cleaning out the tube. Okay, so just pick up a little bit of glue. And then I went into the respective pre-drilled hole, like so. Then I squeezed it for a second and I left it. And then I unchucked. 
from the drill. And no, you don't have to do it that way. You can pre-cut them, but that did work pretty nice. So I was just going to say, if you want to try doing it that way, that's also a good way. And then basically you'll take and, because you got to cut them at some point. So you'll cut it and you'll cut it. And then this is the, this is the part that will actually slide into the foam. So I'm going to go ahead and do that and I'll come back to you when they're all done. So there you have it guys, you got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. Okay, so then these things just get squared up, <clears throat> and um, you just want to make sure they're all pretty pretty well straight, because when you go to put this in the aileron, that's what's going to that's what's gonna keep it all square and true uh, relative to the aileron position. Um, so we have to get that done for both sides, and you can see our little bit of a mark here. So at this point, um, what you're gonna wanna do, and this is kind of one of those processes that you can do at a couple of different steps along the way. I usually take and run a bead or a zigzag of CA, and it looks like it clogged up on me. So, gosh, I just have all sorts of clogs today. So we'll just clean that out. There you go. All right, and then basically what you're going to do is you're going to take um, some product and spread that out. I usually just use Q-tips and just work it up or down the length of it. And what this is going to do is this is going to act as a stiffener for the, the whole process. Um, again, just be careful this stuff. It's pretty strong when you have this much of it spreading out because it will activate and chemically react very quick. So just be careful not to get too excited about the fumes here. Especially in your eyes, your eyes will burn. If you use a Q-tip, it activates things a lot quicker because it kind of reacts with the, the fibers. It will almost smoke sometimes. Okay, so you get that done. Give it a minute or so. Make sure you get the edges, the leading edges, the trailing edges in this case. And uh, when you're when you're satisfied with the spread, um, if you use a paper towel, just be aware it's probably going to stick at some point. But you can take and give it a spritz with kicker. And then when you flip it over to do the other side, you won't have to worry about it sticking to your counter because uh, it will be cured then within a few seconds at least. Okay, then do the other side, kind of the same scenario. Um, and when you're done, it's just, it's almost like varnish. And uh, then you're ready to paint it if you want to paint it, but I usually paint it in place. Depends on what color it's going to be, if it's going to be the same color as the body, or if it's going to be a different color. Okay, so just spreading it like this to get a nice even coat. This side didn't go quite as smooth as the other side because I didn't put as an, enough material on there. But just keeping in mind that you don't want to get it so dang heavy. But that will stiffen this up somewhat beyond what you had already originally increased the stiffness. Okay, so we're just going to do the edges real quick. And then I'm just going to go all the way along the leading edge here. Just get a little bit built up. And then you can grab and just spread that down the length of it. It doesn't need to be a super thick coat. Just enough to kind of help hold the paint. And then also give a little bit of strength. If you go too thick on this stuff, then you'll make it real heavy. But, um, but then you end up with this nice finished coat. Or nice finished material it's got a little bit of flexibility but when you glue this thing on then you're gonna have a nice glue joint you'll want to keep this more or less dry um, from glue because then you can bond that glue together to the material on the plane as well so and you can always add a little bit more later if you want to do a skim coat but you'll be using uh, foam safe when you get it on the plane so we'll get the other one done and then we'll come back to you and show what it looks like all right guys so we got both of these done now evened up all the, the coating on there got a little bit of flexibility a little bit of but a little bit of strength too it's going to be actually a lot like the a lot like the foam 
similar flexibility. And so now the next step is to go ahead and get these pierced in and we'll get them glued together. Okay, so guys, the way this works is pretty simple. You're gonna take, you're gonna look for your little mark that you made and you're gonna lay it out and you're just gonna give a quick visual inspection of the alignment, make sure everything looks good. And just a couple of these need to be squared up a little bit. Make sure they are square. The other thing you can do is if you want to make them the same length, it is kind of nice, but that's not 100% necessary. And remember, when you're done, you can actually make a small adjustment to these, which is pretty cool because they'll act like trim tabs if you need to make a trim adjustment because it's very difficult to do a mechanical adjustment on these. So once you guarantee that you have approximate the center placement, I usually just take and start working them in like so. I get. I get the alignment of the first one, start it in, start it in, start it in, start it in, start it in. Now don't worry, we're not going to apply any glue guys, not yet. We will eventually, but just not right off the moment, right at the moment, we're not going to do any. And all we're doing is we're just walking down as we go, we're not going to mark anything, we're not going to take any measurements, we're just going to push it in. And that little ladder. As soon as you start to push that in, you're going to realize, wow, that's going to be really strong. And ironically enough, if you were to use like a monocoat or something, you could actually monocoat this and make it even bigger if you want. But I'm not planning on doing that on this. See this one poking out? I'm going to pull this back out from one edge over, and then I'm going to actually walk at a steeper angle on that particular one. And then I'm just going to slide these back in. And see, it's still going to walk out, so you know what I'm going to do. I'm going to take some side cutters and I'm just going to find that one that was protruding out. I'm just going to clip it back a little bit because I don't want to fight it. Sometimes you have a few that just don't want to agree with you. It's not really that big a deal. Just clip them. You've got a lot of contact points there. So now what I found, what works the best, and again this, this is not supposed to be like one size fits all. This is going to be a little bit different on each plane. Um, what I usually do is I'll take my thin CA and I'll actually use my thin CA because it'll go into this gap real nicely and you need to do you, you need to take and lift this wing and just sight down the length of it and make sure everything looks nice and square you don't have like a big bump and you can actually make just a real fine tune adjustment here and once you get it to where your liking is, you can use that thin CA uh, to actually run into the, to the these little cuts, these little grooves. So the thin CA in my case uh, is a white cap. I've got my kicker here too, so I use this stuff. Make sure it's opened. Then I'm just gonna just drip onto the onto the pin, onto the pin, onto the pin, and then just slide it in as you go little bit at a time and you know it's not like it's got to be 100% coverage on those pins I mean obviously you've got a lot of contact point but you'll just slide that in and then like these ones where they go right close to the surface like that just do a little bit of the thin it'll actually whip wick into that that opening okay once you get that thin stuff on there then what you want to do is use kicker uh, to set that stuff and then we're going to use thick we're going to use thick to actually make a smooth transition from the foam into the into the wood it's already close to smooth as it is just wipe it make sure you get any little excess off of there and then this we're going to get this running and when I say thick, I mean uh, medium. I don't even know if they make a thick in foam safe. They do make an, a thick. Okay, now I'm going to go about two-thirds of the way down and I'm going to stop. Okay, well, four-fifths of the way down and stop. And the rationale behind that is I'm going to get that uh, plastic shiv from earlier. And I'm going to use that to spread this glue. Make a nice... Nice even film. Ooh, that's a little sharp. I'm not going to actually use that side. 
it's scoring my plastic. That's no good, or the foam. So I'll just use the other side. And that's just going to spread out that CA. And it looks like I need just a little bit more. I didn't quite make it. So I'll just put a little glob here. And then uh, we'll wipe that down from this side into the inside. And then we'll go ahead and spritz it with some kicker. And there you have it, guys. That's pretty much the gist of it. Now I just got to do both sides, and uh, we'll come back to you here in a minute. All right, guys. There you have it. That's what it looks like when it's done. And you can see that it's not been painted yet. I'm going to go fly it, make sure I like the way it works. That way, if I've got way more aileron authority than I, that I think I need, then I can trim it down some. The other thing is I can make uh, trimming adjustments as required. But uh, I think I'm going to probably paint them orange or I'm going to paint them white. So that'll just be uh, something you can catch on the next video for the flight review. So we're going to go fly it, hopefully get you guys a video with the uh, stiffened wing winglet sharklets and then also with the uh, extended ailerons. Thanks a lot for watching, guys. Don't forget to like and subscribe. If you want to see more footage, click the bell, and you'll get notifications for when we put out new, new footage, which is frequent. Thanks a lot. Bye.